Hi, I'd like to talk about pump systems and how they're designed. The reason is that most people, when they're having problems with their pump, perhaps it doesn't deliver what it should, lacks pressure or flow, feel that the problem is with the pump. That's not always the case, and sometimes the problem is with the system. Either it hasn't been designed properly, or there's something malfunctioning with some of the components. A pump system is like a car. The engine moves the car, but a car is much more than an engine. You'll notice that all these sketches are hand-drawn. Yes, I could have made proper illustrations with color and highlighted portions where appropriate, but I also want to show that it's that easy to make a flow schematic. And this is the heart of process design and pump sizing. These sketches are available for download at the link below the video. We will analyze how pump systems are designed so that you understand the role of all the components and how they can affect the flow rate or pressure delivered by the pump. We'll start by designing an aquarium system capable of providing fresh water to a display tank. It could be for tropical fish or turtles or other kinds of marine life. We'll start with a basic water recirculation system and build it up by adding filtration and finish with a fully usable water filtration system for a large aquarium. Even though we'll be dealing with small equipment, the same principles apply to much larger equipment such as used in industry. The essential elements of our system are the pump, pump tank, and display tank with the interconnecting piping. Why not just put a small submersible pump inside the display tank and do away with all with a pump tank? Yes, that could be done and is done, but I'm using an external pump tank and a pump that is outside the water for easier access. Also, this system will be more complex than your typical aquarium and will help us explore how more complex systems are designed. Let's start by sizing some of these components. The size of the display tank will depend on your needs, the quantity of fish and other animals, and the space you have available. I'm going to select a tank that is 2 feet high by 4 feet wide by 6 feet long. The volume of that tank will be 2 times 4 times 6, or 48 cubic feet. This is the water volume. The tank itself will have to be a bit larger. At this point, we need to establish a flow rate. I'm going to consider that the total volume of the display tank has to replace, be replaced once per hour. That sounds reasonable to me for my fictitious fish, but I would check that with an aquarium specialist. Their experience would be very useful. If this were an industrial system, the criteria would be different. You may need to supply some equipment downstream that requires a certain flow rate to meet production goals. The flow rate that will correspond to one change per hour will be 48 cubic feet per hour. I will use gallons instead of cubic feet, and there are 7.48 gallons in a cubic feet. Therefore, the flow rate is 40 times 7.48, which is 359 gallons per hour. Let's change this to gallons per minute, which is a very typical unit, although gallons per hour is also used for small pumps, which means I divide 359 by 60, since there are 60 minutes in an hour, and I get 6 gallons per minute. The other parameters that need to be considered are the elevation of the various components. I set the floor level at zero elevation, the display tank water level at 5 feet, the suction tank level at 2 feet, and the pump suction at 0 0.5 feet. The difference between the display tank and pump tank water level gives us the static head, which is 5 minus 2 or 3 feet. The pump needs to be able at a minimum to pump water up three feet in order to keep the tank full. Since the water is moving, there will be friction and this friction head will be added to the static head to give us the total head requirement of the pump. We will consider the friction head a bit later. Now we determine the pipe sizes, not as complicated as you would first think. The pipe size or diameter is directly determined by the flow rate and the velocity of the liquid in the pipe. The flow rate we know and the velocity will be set using common guidelines. For pipe, on the pressure side of the pump, we use a velocity range of 9 to 12 feet per second. For the pump suction, we use 3 to 5 feet per second, and for the gravity drain line, 1 to 3 feet per second. As you can see, there is a range so that we have some flexibility to accommodate the various 
commercially available pipe diameters. You can go outside this range, but if you select a high velocity, you will have more friction and then a bigger pump will be required. If you select a low velocity, the pipe will have to be bigger and will therefore cost more. An appropriate balance needs to be struck, which is what occurs when using these guidelines. Let's calculate the pipe diameter on the discharge side of the pump. The formula that combines velocity, flow rate, and diameter is the velocity in feet per second is equal to 0.408 times the flow rate in gallons per minute divided by the diameter of the pipe in inches squared. Since we are looking for the diameter, we turn this formula around, giving the diameter in inches is equal to 0.48 times the flow rate divided by the velocity and taking the square root of the result. This gives us a value of 0.5 inches. Since pipe in that size is not much more expensive, whether you buy a half inch or three quarter inch, I would be tempted to use three quarter inch to lower the velocity and reduce the friction head. Remember, the goal is to achieve the flow rate of 6 gallons per minute and not a set velocity. The diameter we're talking about is the internal diameter. Most pipes that you can purchase at the hardware store are given in nominal pipe size, which is larger than the internal diameter and closer to the outside diameter. The flow of a liquid through pipe involves friction, whether it's a small aquarium system or a giant industrial transfer system. The same principles apply. The amount of pressure that the pump needs to develop has to provide the energy for the static head plus the friction head. Without determining these two accurately, the pump you select will likely be undersized and you will not get your required flow. Now you can take a hit and miss approach and oversize your initial pump selection based on the static head or follow me through this easy approach to calculating friction. Friction depends on flow rate the internal pipe diameter, and the pipe length. There are many ways to determine friction. I'm going to give you an overview and use a method that is the most accurate and easiest. Since this is a fairly involved subject, I'm going to make another short video that covers it in more depth for those of you that are curious. I found a web-based calculator at calculatoredge.com. The result seems reasonable, but I can't guarantee the accuracy since I have no idea what formulas or assumptions they are using. I put in 6 gallons per minute for flow, 0.5 inch for pipe diameter, 10 feet for length, HDP for the material, and obtain 7.9 feet of friction head loss. The next approach is using tables such as those found in the Cameron Hydraulic Data Book. This is a time-honored source for this type of information used by countless engineers on all types of small or large fluid flow projects. Another way to use all is to use all the tried and true formulas for fluid flow, friction, and calculate the result yourself. This is more involved than we need to get into here and will be covered in the video previously mentioned. So I'm going to take you through the second approach because it is easy and accurate. The tables that I'm showing will be included in the presentation at the download link initially mentioned. They are an extract of the Cameron Hydraulic Data Book, which you can purchase at this site or on Amazon. If you look at the table for new steel pipe, half inch nominal pipe size, the closest we get to our 0.5 inch internal diameter is Schedule 160, 0.464 inch internal diameter. Now I know you're not going to use Schedule 160 pipe, but you will find polyethylene pipe somewhere that has an internal diameter close to 0.5 inches. If we follow along on the line for 6 gallons per minute, and we go to the head loss feet per 100 feet, we get a value of 138. So we have 138 feet of head loss per 100 feet of pipe. In our case, for a 10 foot long pipe, this means 138 divided by 100 times 10 equals 13.8 feet of friction loss. This is quite large compared to our static head of 2 feet. So this justifies the previous comment I made about using a larger pipe size. If we use a 3 quarter inch nominal pipe size for the same flow rate using Schedule 80 pipe, which has an inside diameter of 0.742 inch, we get a head loss of 14.9 feet per 100 feet of pipe, 
or a friction loss of 1.49 for our 10-foot pipe. So as you see, doing a flow schematic and sizing a pump go hand in hand.